In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends in the Lord, especially those who are participating in this online Lenten recollection uh, sponsored by the Contemplatives Outreach uh, Philippines, we begin our morning of reflection first with the Eucharistic celebration. Usually it's the other way around, but I decided to start off our day with the Mass because the Eucharist is the highest form of prayer. And we ask the Lord to strengthen us in faith, hope, and love given our Lenten journey. As later on, this will spill over to our reflection, our contemplation on both the Lenten and perhaps moving to the Easter mysteries. To prepare for our Eucharistic sacrifice, let us first recognize our feelings, our sins before God and before one another and ask for pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Turn our hearts to you, Eternal Father, and grant that seeking always the one thing necessary and carrying out works of charity we may be dedicated to your worship through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, this day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and decrees. Be careful then to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you are making this agreement with the Lord. He is to be your God and you are to walk in his ways and observe his statutes, commandments, and decrees and to hearken to his voice. And today, the Lord is making this agreement with you. You are to be a people peculiarly his own, as he promised you, and provided you, and provided you keep all his commandments. He will then raise you high in praise and renown and glory above all other nations he has made. And you will be a people sacred to the Lord your God, as he promised. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. 
I will give you thanks with an upright heart when I have learned your just ordinances. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brothers and sisters only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same. So be perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading from the book of Deuteronomy makes us look back at this uh, Old Testament context where the covenant between God and man was established, especially during the time of Moses. And in that covenant, it was made clear, number one, that God is a faithful God. And knowing the fidelity of God and His love, the response of those who will be true to that covenant will also be a certain sense of fidelity by following the commandments. That's why Moses, as he was telling the people, to observe the basic statutes and decrees up until now the Jews are able to by heart by head in their own faith would adhere to that covenant by memorizing taking to heart all the statutes, more than 600 precepts of God's commandments. But you know, it's interesting if we link this to the gospel, given the law of God. Jesus tries to give a twist to the commandments. Because if you know the Ten Commandments, 
which is done in a very, you know, as they say, the via negativa, negative way in spirituality, thou shall not, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wife or thy neighbor's goods, and so on and so forth. Here the Lord gives a tall order, and we may consider this a really bold commandment. Picking up from yesterday's gospel, in one line, love your enemies. Now, why does the commandment make sense as a command? Because as we all know in our own experience, when we have this relationship and in yesterday's gospel, we are so overwhelmed by anger, by hatred, by bitterness. How difficult it is to love those who hurt us, those who have offended us, our enemies. But I'd like to examine the logic of Christ because there's a certain logic in his argument. No? He doesn't simply say, love your enemies, period. No? There is some sort of uh, uh, flow here when we look at his teaching. And I think I can put it in gist. He says here, For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Meaning, what good is there? Because tax collectors do the same. Pagans do the same. And think about it. Mas maganda nga po sa Tagalog, di ba? No? Kasi kung yung mamahalin mo, yung nagmamahal na rin sa'yo, walang challenge. Kung ang ngingitian mo, pakikisamahan mo, yung umingiti din sa'yo, yung okay na makisama sa iyo, ginagawa naman po natin yan. Napakadali. But here the Lord says, no, and you follow the logic, but if you love your enemies, and do this in comparison to tax collectors and pagans who will have difficulty in doing it, then you are being perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect. Brothers and sisters, this is really the core food for thought as we begin our recollection. Because when we entered the Lenten season on Ash Wednesday, we were, in a way, led to go through the process of conversion, the process of renewal, the process of walking an extra mile, the process of when slapped on one cheek to give the other cheek. And the Lord is saying, if you want to be my follower, and perhaps now if you're really true to being a Christian, then you will follow that command. Because in so doing, you become perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Greek term, if you look at this last line, can be translated to holiness. Be holy as the Father is holy. So I ask you, how do you want to celebrate the Lenten season moving towards Easter? like the tax collectors, like the pagans, so easy. But as we know, Lent is characterized by sacrifice. Can you heed the challenge of the Lord? To love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. We will be entering 
an extended moment of contemplative silence. I'm inviting you to think of a person in your life, whether in the family, an office mate, in the community, even a relative, perhaps even an acquaintance or someone no, uh, distant to you whom you consider your enemy, whom you consider has offended you, your sentiments, your principles, those who have hurt you. As we go into this contemplative silence, enter the challenge to love and most of all, given your charism as contemplatives outreached for many, many years to pray for them. And perhaps later on, after the Mass or tomorrow, to be led in whatever degree to reconcile with those who have offended you.
with confidence, we now approach the all-forgiving Father whose mercy towards us is limitless and without bounds. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church on earth may be a living example of the forgiveness and compassion shown by Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may look with kindness even upon those who have hurt us, injured us, or caused us hardship in any way. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That with God's grace, we may be able to forgive our enemies. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may show care and compassion for the sick, the old and the, ne the neglected. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Most Reverend Milo Hubert Vergara and the members of the Contemplatives Outreach Philippines, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead, especially for the soul of Cesar Sr., Concordia, Vivian, and Griselda, may they be blessed and rewarded with eternal life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and compassionate Father, we thank you for the forgiveness you have offered through your Son. Help us to show your forgiveness to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Show unceasing favor, O Lord, to those you refresh with this divine. May these blessed mysteries by which we are restored, O Lord, we pray, make us worthy of the gift they bestow through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts you lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is only right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world so as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise us without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Eat. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, my unworthy and sinful bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, have pleased you throughout the ages we are married to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor shores forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
We have just received Jesus in Holy Communion. What a blessed moment to enter deeper contemplative silence. We ask the Lord who is in us to help us forgive those who have hurt us. And in so doing, show one of the deepest love to our brothers and sisters. Our share in the Paschal Mystery of Christ. Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need 
to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Palungsod, Pray for us. Let us pray. Show unceasing favor, O Lord, to those you refresh with this divine mystery and accompanying with salutary consolations those you have imbued with heavenly teaching through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessing for which they have longed strengthen your faithful, O God, so that never straying from your will, they may always rejoice in your benefits through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please stand by. Bishop Milo will return in about five to ten minutes to talk about sowing the seeds and reaping the fruits of God's love. Thank
Good morning, Bishop Milo. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, members of Contemplative Outreach Philippines, friends, honored guests, and of course, Bishop Milo. Thank you very much for a wonderful start to our weekend with the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I would like to welcome everyone to Contemplative Outreach Philippines' third monthly Mass and Formation Talk of 2022. This month's presentation is entitled Sowing the Seeds and Reaping the Fruits of God's Love, Reflections on the Message of Pope Francis for Lent 2022. We are honored and privileged to have as our speaker and celebrant today, His Excellency, the Most Reverend Milo Hubert Vergara, Bishop of the Diocese of Pasig. Bishop Milo was appointed by St. John Paul II as the third bishop of the Diocese of San Jose and Nueva Ecija from 2005 to 2011. Currently, he serves as the second bishop of the Diocese of Pasig. He also served in numerous capacities as chairman of several commissions for the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. Currently, he is the chairman of the Office of Clergy of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences and is incumbent vice president of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. Bishop Milo is also a doctor of sacred theology and is the author of a number of books, including Contemplating the Seven Last Words of Jesus Christ, Living the Priesthood, Reflections on Priestly Life and Ministry, Praying the Way of the Cross with St. John Mary Vian. He also published a series of homily reflections entitled The Sunday Gospel, a Shepherd's Voice, Cycle A and B, as well as A Shepherd's Oil and Pananalangin ng Daan ng Cruz kasama si San Juan Maria Vianney, and is a regular contributor of articles in Bulletin Ecclesiastico Filipinas. I hope I said that right, now, Bishop. Before we give Bishop Milo a warm welcome, I would like to remind everyone that following his talk, there will be a brief Q&A period at the end of his presentation. Please feel free to write your comments or questions in the chat box at any time. The button can be found on the lower portion of your screens. Click to open the chat box and type your questions in the right column and press enter. Your questions will be collated and shared with Bishop Milo. Without further ado, let us please welcome His Excellency, the Most Reverend Milo Hubert Bergara. Good morning, Bishop. Hey, uh, good, mor good morning to everyone. No? Um, I hope we started everything right with the celebration of the Eucharist. And um, uh, actually, I will be sharing something this morning as uh, part of our uh, Lenten journey uh, coming from the Holy Father. That's why, though I entitled this Sowing the Seeds and Reaping the Fruits of God's Love, it is subtitled Some Reflections on the Message of Pope Francis for Lent 2022. Um, in that Lenten message, uh, so that we can sort of uh, masticate uh, salient points uh, and then go through the, the core of the letter of Pope Francis, uh, he starts off with, with writing, Lent is a favorable time for personal and community renewal as it leads us to the Paschal mystery of the death and resurrection of Christ. Um, you know, that statement is loaded because you will see that the Lenten journey uh, is twofold. On one hand, it, it is a personal uh, experience of renewal, but on another hand, it is also uh, and inevitably, a communal experience. No? So just think about it. You're attending this recollection uh, via Zoom or via YouTube. And though your uh, participation in the Eucharistic celebration is done in an individual manner, it can never be separated from the church, God's community. So we are all together, no? We, all, we celebrated the Eucharist together, and together we are uh, having this reflection. And this is something beautiful no? because you will also understand um, 
these two aspects of prayer, no? as perhaps you have already been taught in your contemplative outreach ministry, even in the past talks. Prayer is both individual and public. It is both private and communal. No? So um, there is a symbiotic relationship in our prayer life when we talk of the Eucharist, our liturgy of the hours, or even our contemplative experience. Uh, so that's why I think the Holy Father was right no, by starting off the letter and saying that it is both a personal and uh, community renewal experience. Now, just a little bit of review. No, the Tagalog word we use, koresma, is actually uh, called from the Spanish, but its, its Latin roots is quadragesima. No? And as we all know, no, this means number 40. No? And we go back to scriptures no? uh, and look back even in the book of Genesis, if you recall, the great deluge, the great flood from Noah lasted for 40 days and even 40 nights. The Israelites, they journeyed to the promised land for 40 years from Egypt. Yes, they crossed the Red Sea. But after that crossing, the Passover did not end when they were at the other end of the sea, when they were at shore. But their journey to the promised land lasted for 40 long years. And that 40 years was actually in the wilderness. You know? We would call it a desert. And of course, 40 days, Jesus prayed in the desert. We, we had this gospel text last Sunday where Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. If you have gone to Holy Land, uh, you might have uh, uh, done a pilgrimage to the Mount of Temptation. There are different mounts there. No? But you will see also that Mount no, is a dry place. No? It is uh, a place where there is so much aridity. And as we have this Lenten journey going Easter, we all know 40 days, uh, Jesus ascended into heaven after his resurrection. No? So you will count that. Um, you know, I encountered a book, actually two books, no? uh, uh, many, many years back, no? in my early years in the priesthood. The first book was entitled 30 Days of uh, uh, 40 Days Plus Three. No? Sorry, 40 Days Plus Three, like characterizing 40, 40 days of Lent and the three days of the Paschal Triduum. And then the next one is 50 days because Easter is 50 days, no? but 50 days plus forever. So you will see here no, that uh, after the ascension, uh, the movement is to uh, this experience no, of uh, Pentecost. Now, That's why we can treat, I'm sure a number of priests may have uh, uh, expressed this during Ash Wednesday, that Lent is like you know, a 40-day retreat. No? Uh, and if you go to the Anglo-Saxon Lenten, no? it actually means spring. No? That's the meaning of the word Lent. No? It is a season where fresh flowers bloom. You have this in either Tagaytay or even Baguio no? because of the, uh, it's like, you know, most of the time, uh, it's like a cool season. But we can even look at this symbolically because if you look at the movement no, from uh, the start of Lent going to uh, Holy Week, uh, this the symbol of the ashes makes this entering a springtime through the 40-day retreat no, 
uh, something that we are motivated to go through. You know? Because last year, when we had Palm Sunday, as we call it, Passion Sunday, this was the time when we blessed fresh palm branches. You know? And the fresh palm branches then already withered and on the eve of Ash Wednesday, this is burned so that they become ashes to be blessed, no? to be imposed on our foreheads. Thanks be to God. At least uh, after two years, no, we are able to have a normal imposition of ashes on our foreheads no? and go to church. No? So you see here the movement no? because from fresh palm branches, then what happens? They wither. Uh, they become they have they became ashes we bless the ashes and then as we go along the weeks of lent they were already moving into the second week of lent by tonight no by this afternoon because of the anticipated mass the second sunday of lent comes in we have five sundays of lent and then what happens will be uh we will have passion sunday again and then we will see again fresh palms no so this whole experience no, of what we call uh, springtime freshness is uh, uh, a challenge for us. No? That's why Lent is a holy season of conversion and renewal. So uh, we hope there will be springtime in our life of faith, in our spiritual life. No? It's really a challenge, no? Once we enter that road to conversion, uh, renewal will truly happen. And then, um, in that letter also, interestingly, Pope Francis no, wrote, Lent is certainly such an opportune time, but is our entire existence, no, not only Lent, of which Lent is uh, some way an image. No? All too often in our lives, greed, pride, and the desire to possess, accumulate, and consume have the upper hand as we see from the story of the foolish man in the gospel who thought his life was safe and secure because of the abundant grain and goods he had stored in his barns. You can ref, uh, look at Luke 12, verses 16 to 21. Maganda po ito, no? kasi parang sinasabi po dito no, na... Uh, if we are not vigilant, we are complacent, what happens actually is no, we fall into the trap no, of uh, focusing on ourselves, uh, self-gratification, indulgence, no, and then we lose sight of God and also others. We think of what can, what can uh, give us uh, a sense of pleasure. No? And at times we are even consumed no, by secularism by the secular world. I think the pandemic has taught us no, that life is short. No? And for two years, we have witnessed infections and most of all deaths. No? Many people have died, not only in our country, worldwide, and perhaps we have experienced this even in our families, no, in our close circle. No? And it's really a wake-up call, no? looking at uh, how we have been and what God is calling us to do, uh, knowing that we cannot be like this foolish man no? who stored everything and thought that he can live by the dictum, eat, drink, no, and be merry, as if no, uh, there will be mortality, but we're mortal beings. No? A time will come, God will call us. And when that time comes, what will happen to what we have stored, what we have hoarded, what we have saved, when we are called to really focus on how, how we have been as human beings and Christians? Um, so Pope Francis continues and says, Lent invites us to conversion, to a change in mindset so that life's truth and beauty may be found not so much in possessing as in giving, not so much in accumulating as in sowing and sharing good news. So I think conversion here tells us of a movement from inward to outward. Uh, that's why he, he talks here about giving and sharing, 
goodness. No? And that is actually the core of his message. No? If we want to enter a change of heart, as the Greek word metanoia, you have heard that many times no? uh, in our human life and Christian life, the challenge really no, is to get rid of our self-centeredness, our selfishness, our pride, so as to move into other-centeredness. Perhaps altruism, no? a movement to, to giving, to, to authentic stewardship, no? uh, a movement to sharing the goodness and love of Christ. That's why uh, we go back to Ash Wednesday. No? Uh, you have perhaps heard no, the two types that were may have been uh, expressed by the priest or the bishop you know, when you attended Mass, if you did. You know? The first one is repent and believe in the gospel. So the call to repentance you know, and to uh, believe in the good news of Christ. And this call to repent you know, and to, to renew our faith is even dramatized with the second formula. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Siguro narinig niyo na rin po no kung ipaparaphrase po ito pwedeng sabihin po sa inyo no sa Tagalog do no? mamamatay ka rin no di ba? Mas maganda nga marinig niyo medyo nakakatakot lang itong English na formula no uh, medyo katanggap-tanggap pa pong marinig eh pero pag sinabi mamamatay ka rin medyo matatakot ka mayayanig ka pero yun yung katotohanan di ba? No, sa abo ka ng galik, sa abo ka rin babalik. So, gumising ka na. No? Magsisi ka na sa kasalanan mo. No? At magbagong buhay ka na uh, kay Kristo. Magbagong buhay ka na sa Diyos. No? Um, so, what should be our spiritual journey of the 40 days of Lent lead us to appreciate and be renewed about? Now, This is a big word, baptism. You may have thought, no? uh, oh, sige, when you talk of Lent, ayan, lo, le, Lent, we will be talking about conversion, about, about uh, doing away with our uh, sinful and selfish attitudes. No? Uh, but I think liturgically and looking at who we are, uh, this is where we should be led to appreciate and to be serious about the first sacrament we have received. Whenever I baptize, no, or whenever I do even confirmation and give a catechesis, isn't it true? Uh, we have to go back to who we are. And we thank God for this great gift bestowed upon us the gift of baptism when we were baptized we received this identity of becoming children of god you look at scriptures the letters of paul even the letter of paul to the galatians because of this gift of baptism we can call call god abba father no? and imagine no because of this gift, God is not far from us. God is so near us that we, we should appreciate how we have become part of God's family. Madaling ako maintindihan. No? We call God Father. We call Jesus our brother. The Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And because of this, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. However, deepening that, no? identity, the gift of baptism also bestows on us uh, our inheritance of God's kingdom. That's why we, be, we have become co-heirs of God's kingdom. Minana na po natin yung langit. Um, and given the Christian doctrine, this is something we should thank the Lord for at the same time be serious about. 
pupunta ka na sa langit, tagapagmana ka na. Palagi ko ang ina-argue dyan, eh, no? pag hindi mo ma-appreciate, no? ano ba kaibahan natin sa anghel? Angels, they're spiritual beings. But they do not have that gift of inheriting God's kingdom. They're just angels. But we who are baptized, how blessed we are. Because we are greater than angels. As children of God, we inherit heaven. That's why you will see, as taught by the church, and this is one of the main documents of Vatican II, Sacrosanctum Concilium. This is on sacred liturgy. In number 109, it is something we read there. The season of Lent has a twofold character. Primarily by recalling or preparing for baptism and by penance, it disposes the faithful who more diligently hear the word of God and devote themselves to prayer to celebrate the Paschal mystery. So you see, uh, the twofold character that is specified. That's why, you know, during the Lenten season, the preparing for baptism, this is a time when catechumens are being prepared for baptism during the Easter Vigil. And of course, in that preparation, we look at ourselves and see how we have been, how we are so that we should be who God wants us to be. And we are called to a life of penance. That's why during Lent, this is the best time to go to confession. And uh, things have loosened up. We're in alert level one. Uh, our hope is you know, that uh, given this opportunity, we can go back to the normal church services you know, and uh, avail of the sacrament of reconciliation. So, now, you look, the, look at this. No? One of the highlights in the Easter, in the liturgy of the Easter Vigil are as follows, di ba? Actually, four parts po yan eh. No? Yung una po ay yung service of the light. No? And then there's the liturgy of the word. But after that, before the liturgy of the Eucharist, is the liturgy of baptism. This, this is the time when after the preaching, we go to a moment when there are candidates who have been prepared for baptism and most of them are adults. No? They are baptized, no? uh, given this water that is blessed no? during Easter. And then in that liturgy also, what follows no? as an adjunct, because you're really in the great state of grace, is confirmation for adults. But let's say there is no baptism. The one that happens in all Eucharistic celebrations during Easter Sunday is the renewal of baptismal promises. When you go to Mass, you will see, no, after the homily, the Apostles' Creed is professed. No, we make that. No? We make that uh, profession of faith. Here, in the renewal of baptismal promises, this Apostles' Creed is done in a different form. It's a question and answer form where we'll respond, I do. Do you, be, do you reject Satan? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, and so on and so forth? And we respond with, I do. It is renewing our baptismal promises because when we were baptized, if you go to the right, and a number of you perhaps no, have been godfathers and godmothers, no? during the rite of infant baptisms, the parents and godparents, they respond in behalf of the one who is being baptized. That's why all this makes sense when we go through this whole period of Lent. We are being prepared to appreciate, to recognize, and to be serious about our baptismal identity. Uh, in that letter of Pope Francis no, for this year, there is something that Pope Francis then practically uh, 
shares no with us he says let us not grow tired of doing good for in due time we shall reap our harvest if we do not give up so then while we have the opportunity the kairos moment because there are two concepts of time chronos and kairos because chronos is about the logic of time like today it's march 12 tomorrow it's march 13 the kairos is it is the moment the grace moment the opportunity and the holy father says let us do good to all this is coming from galatians 6 verses 9 to 10 and that's why i entitled our uh, recollection talk uh, sowing and reaping because coming from the letter of paul to the galatians no this is what the holy father wants no uh, to not grow tired of sowing goodness and god's love so as to reap the fruits of God's love also in our own lives. Anyway, question. Let's be more contextual. Are you tired? Are you tired of this pandemic? Actually, it's getting to our nerves, isn't it? No? Uh, two years na po. No? Uh, sana nga, sabi nga ni Father Austriaco, the beginning of the end na po ito. Tapos biglang maririnig natin, merong bagong Demicro naman. No? Variant. Sabay ng Delta at Omicron. No? Sabi ko, ano kaya? Kung makaka-apekto kaya sa atin? This, this, is, this was announced by the World Health Organization and still being monitored no? of its effects. No? It's happening already in the West. Will this be another wave and then we go back to square one? Nakakapagod po, di ba? So I'm sure uh, we have we have this experience, no? Na if our health workers, our frontliners, the medical professionals are really tired of uh, caring for those who are infected and saving lives, no? we look at our own experience and we are also tired. No? We hope this moves into an endemic or you know this is we go back to a normalcy a new normal are you tired of immobility and just staying home nako ngayon po ang dami nang lumalabas bumabalik na po traffic di ba no? pero i could just imagine nung alert level 3 or 4 no lalo na nung uh, first few months no nung 2020 di ka makalabas Iba sa atin, napakahili gumala. No? Eh, kaso nga lang, meron tayong mga comorbidity, uh, senior tayo, pati yung mga anak natin, gusto tayo ikandado, walang driver, walang susi ng kotse, di ba? No? Napakahirap. But really, uh, this is also getting to our nerves. Mahirap din yung palaging ano, no? Uh, nasa bahay na lang. That's why you know the beaches are being filled right now, resorts, no because we're, we're allowed uh, it is symptomatic of how we want to be moving. As they say we cannot be stuck to our homes that have been like coffins for us, no. Or are you tired of terrorism and wars, no? Uh, you know what's happening now in the Ukraine and Russia? There is anxiety even though we're in the different part of the globe, but we know this will affect us. We are looking at the connection with China, uh, given the tensions we have also here in the southeast of Asia. But we want world peace, no? And as there is also internal turmoil, there is turmoil in our families, there is even wars happening and terrorism even in our country and then we think of what's happening no, in eastern europe this also is an exhausting experience for us emotionally and of course are you tired of lies and deceptions in politics no? 
po, napakainit po ng politika dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, sometimes, no, on our own, we look at social media, whatever platform that is, whatever app, or if you still read the newspaper and you're uh, used to holding something or watching TV and the news, at times you find yourself just shaking your head. And there are many factors here, no? not only the national and local candidates, but how this affects different segments of society, church, uh, families, lay organizations, schools. This is also exhausting, isn't it? And I do not know what's going on in you, but I'm sure you have your own share of debates, given your political, your, your preference for your candidates for the elections. And we're so polarized, as they say. This is the reality. And then, of course, are you tired of your personal problems, your worries and anxieties? I, I, I cannot name them. You know what I mean. We have our own share. And we have grown tired and weary of many things in our lives. Is it your spouse? Is it your, your child, your son, daughter? Is it your work? Financial foibles, troubles? Where are you stressed out right now? I do not know. But we're not exempt. And this gets into our system. Tao lamang po tayo. Kalimitan. Pwede nating sabihin. No? Pagod na pagod na po tayo. Diba? Darating po ang tipping point niya. No? Parang pag nanonood ka ng broken vow. Diba? Broken marriage vow. Ayan. Dadating ang time talaga. Uh, ayan. No? Sasabog ka na lang. Anyway, well, this is what Pope Francis tells us. No? Allow God to sow His word in us so we do not become weary. And this is interesting here in the letter he said, the first to sow is God Himself who with great generosity continues to sow abundant seeds of goodness in our human family, coming from Fratelli Tutti number 54. During Lent, we are called to respond to God's gift by accepting His Word, which is living and active. That's why regular listening to the Word of God makes us open and docile to His working and bears fruit in our lives. So you see here, in the letter, he already tells us of a very fundamental principle. The first move comes from God. And this also tells us you know, of our teaching on prayer. Teaching, when you talk of prayer, it is first God's initiative. So the Holy Spirit enters us. We only react or respond to the initiative of God. That's why in the letter, what Pope Francis teaches no, is that when we look at this Lenten journey, what happens is we should recognize that God sows His word and we are called to respond to God's gift by accepting His Word. So, Lent is really a time of listening to God's Word. I do not know whether you noticed it, no? Particularly during these two seasons of Lent and Advent. But even in Easter, no? These are particular seasons. The readings of the liturgies, the Eucharist, are placed so well. They are intimately connected, No? So at times, no, they say, no, when the Lenten season comes, 
it is called the preacher's delight because it is easier for him to connect the first reading or the weekday to the responsorial psalm, even to the gospel, or even the second reading during Sundays. Unlike the other, you know, when you're in ordinary time, there will be moments when it seems the first reading or the, the gospel, they seem to be uh, not attuned in terms of how you can connect so that you have one theme. Pero pag dumating po yung Lent at papuntang Easter, maganda yan. No? Kasi yung, yung Word of God, no? inayos po yan na talagang may connection. Kaya kanina napansin nyo na nag-homily po ako, no? Sinimulan ko, kinonekta ko yung first reading doon po sa, sa gospel. Tapos mapapansin nyo, kahapon, konektado po yung gospel, yung sa ngayon. Kasi, even when you talk of loving one's enemies, yesterday's gospel was actually the Lord telling us if you have uh, a heated argument with someone, no? and you're going to the altar, leave first the gift to the altar and go to the person to forgive and reconcile with him. Kaya nga tama po, no? Uh, sinasabi ko nga po ito pag nagtuturo ako ng homiletics. No? Uh, pagdating ng Lent, yan, it is the preacher's delight even though at times for lay people, the preacher is not your delight. No? Kasi alam niyo naman, may mga pare, no? nahihirapan po talaga na magbigay ng magandang sermon. No? Uh, minsan napakahaba, walang, walang sense o kaya... Sabi nga po, hindi na maka-take off, di pa maka-landing yung pare. No? Kaya ganun. So, are you mismo? You know, I'm sure. No? You're, you're uh, finding ways and means to, to attend a mass where you have a priest who is a good preacher so that you can get, you know, uh, substance no, from, from God's word. And then the Holy Father says, yes, yet God gives strength to the weary. He strengthens the powerless. Those who hope in the Lord will regain their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Though they run, they will not grow weary. Though they walk, they will never tire. So the Lenten season calls us to place our faith and hope in the Lord. Since only if we fix our gaze on the risen Christ, will we be able to respond to the Apostles' appeal. Let us never grow tired of doing good. A little while ago, I shared with you, are you tired of all this? And I enumerated a number of things. But I think the challenge of the Holy Father coming from the letter of Paul to the Galatians no, is if we just allow God's word to lift us up, we will find ourselves soaring no? like eagles with wings. And we will not grow tired. And as long as we fix our gaze on the Lord, we will never grow tired. I, you know, I just want to give an image. Have you seen sa, a person in your life no, na ang daming ginagawa, pero minsan nagko-comment ka, gawa pa rin ng gawa. Pag tinanong mo, hindi ka ba napapagod? Hindi ko ba napapagod? So, ngingiti lang sa'yo. Okay, sabihin niya, no, kahit marami siyang ginagawa, okay lang. I had this personal experience with Pope Francis. No? Because if you recall in 2015, uh, I was the, the chair of the information and media during the papal visit. So, so, I was sort of up close and personal uh, with Pope Francis given the day-to-day -day schedule of his travel when he entered our, our country. This whole itinerary and then given the sea, I, did not, I would want to say the flux or the flow of people, but the sea of people that even went beyond World Youth Day 1995. Sabi, World Youth Day, 5,000 sa ating yata noong 2015, umabot ng 7,000 sa Luneta. 
Pero alam niyo, ito yung ano, no? kasi nakausap ko yung ano, no? yung mga, alimbawa, yung uh, Vatican spokesperson, no? uh, si Father Lombardi SJ. No? Kasi nakikita ko yung Holy Father talaga. Ang nakikita niyo yung blow by blow sa media. Eh. Pero hindi niyo nakikita yung pagkatapos ng mga event, alimbawa sa cathedral, sa Malacanang, o kaya dun sa ano no sa Moa, Mall of Asia or even when he went to ano no to uh, to Leyte no to Tacloban actually after the event that you saw on TV there were other events in the nunciature and then when the holy father was in the the pope's mobile And then he would even take time to stop. I, I really asked Father Lombardi, no? uh, this is really taxing for Pope Francis. And you know what he told me? He said, in my experience with him, I think he draws energy from his service. And the more he sees the enthusiasm of people, the more he is energized. Ako kaya pala. So, parang, I think, this is where we understand from experience what the Holy Father wants to tell us. Nothing can go wrong if you're doing good and you expend even your physical resources because God will fill in. We become tired at times of watching Netflix. Nakailang Korea drama na ba kayo? Oo, oh, lampas derte na po ako. Ha? Lampas derte na ako. Uh, naka, nakakapagod din manood ng ano, ha? Netflix, view. Hmm. Nakakapagod din kumain. Oh. Nakakapagod din gumala. Naramdaman niyo na ba yung kayo ano, ano, nagbakasyon pero... Imbis na nagpahinga kayo, lalo kayo napagod. May ganyan. Pero sabi niya dito, dapat makita niyo ang hindi nakakapagod yung pag gumagawa ka ng mabuti. Kasi parang nagpupuno ang Diyos dahil mabuti yung ginagawa. Eh lalo na siguro pag gumagawa ka ng masama, nakakapagod po yan. Kasi what drains you is not only the physical as perhaps you are fed with your pride, with your selfishness. Hmm? Uh, even your guilt will later on take its toll on you. So, where should not we grow tired? And here, in the letter, the, lo- the Holy Father brings us back to the three practical acts of love during Lent. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Anyway, let's read through the letter. This is what the Holy Father says. Let us not grow tired of praying. Jesus taught us to pray always without becoming weary. We need to pray because we need God. Thinking that we need nothing other than ourselves is a dangerous illusion. If the pandemic has heightened the awareness of our own personal and social fragility, may this Lent allow us to experience the consolation provided by faith in God without whom we cannot stand firm. So, prayer. Uh, Remember in the Gospel text, And this is always during Ash Wednesday. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And why did... Perhaps the Holy Father uh, point out the importance of prayer and then we look back to this gospel. I have been always um, 
sort of reflecting on why shut sh- shut the door in your room was it only because Jesus was trying to tell us not to show off in prayer like the Pharisees and scribes. There was one meditation in a book it's, you know, uh, by a French Jesuit, Father Laplace. And he said, if you go back to the French word of this door, it, it is not actually door, but it's heart. So I found that very interesting. Kaya pala, no, sabi. When you pray, no, uh, he said, go into the inner room of your heart and so that, you know, you can dwell there so that you're able to meet God. You experience a loving encounter with God. Isn't it true when we pray that's what happens? Isn't it true when we go through a contemplative prayer, that is what happens. There is this loving encounter that takes place from within. And you experience that peace from within. There, we're able to listen not to what we're saying or what others are saying, but listen to God himself who will tell us what we need to do? Who will tell us what we need to hear? St. Augustine would put it this way, by almsgiving and fasting, we add wings of fervor to our prayers so that they move easily up and reach God. So beautiful because it's trying to see the integration of almsgiving and fasting in our life of prayer. You know, many years ago, I encountered this no, in the internet. And I just like to uh, bring this to you and run in a rundown sequence. When you don't know how to pray, pray anyway. Ignorance is no excuse. When you don't feel like praying, pray anyway. Depression is no excuse. When dullness sits on you like a vulture and you can't muster enough Enthusiasm to change channels, much less to pray. Pray anyway. Boredom is no excuse. When you see no need to pray and no reason to intercede for those about you, recognize this as a sign of impending danger and pray anyway. Blindness is no excuse. When you've grown spiritually lazy and feel that you'll never be able to pick up your Bible and read it the way you once did, especially pray anyway. Laziness is no excuse. When you don't understand what the big deal is about prayer and you think it's overrated because it never did you much good, pray anyway. Immaturity is no excuse. When you're too tired to remember your own name and you know God will understand if you don't pray, pray anyway. Fatigue is no excuse. When you're embarrassed to be back before God confessing the same sins and admitting the same failures, come on and pray anyway. Shame is no excuse. When you've been unfaithful and you know it and you feel that burden of guilt that makes you want to run and hide under the porch, pray anyway. Sin is no excuse. When the nagging voice of the enemy keeps telling you there's no God and even if there were, it never have anything to do with nothing like you, pray anyway. Unbelief is no excuse. We can bless ourselves immeasurably by rescuing our prayer life from bondage to our emotions and circumstances. There is no time and there are no conditions in which prayer is not necessary, not helpful, and not the right thing to do. So, let us always pray. And I'm sure, as you all know, prayer is not governed by emotions 
by whatever physical circumstances we have. It is an act of the will. And then the Holy Father writes, let us not grow tired of uprooting evil from our lives. May the corporal fasting to which Lent calls us to fortify our spirit for the battle against sin. Let us not grow tired of asking for forgiveness in the sacrament of penance and reconciliation, knowing that God never tires of forgiving. Fasting. No? Alam niyo eh, maganda rin to from Matthew 6. We, we heard that in Ash Wednesday. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you are not seen by men to be fasting, but by your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Again, an attack on the Pharisees and scribes, di ba? because you know, like prayer, they want to show people that they were praying. And like in In fasting, they were they were showing off no, by by presenting a gloomy face that they were doing this type of asceticism. So it was again a performance. So it was more outward than inward. Um, Saint Leo the Great once said. Our fasting that not, does not consist merely in abstinence from food. In fact, there is no profit in depriving the body on nourishment unless the spirit turns from injustice and the tongue abstains from quarreling. Maganda po ito eh, no? Kasi I think even if you look at the whole challenge of fasting, we are called to fast from evil and sin. Eh, lalo na nga po ngayon, mas madali nga mag-physical fasting eh. Yung ibang, galing mag-intermittent fasting, siguro it works for you. no? But the harder one is to fast from evil and sin. Uh, that's why, siguro just something you may have perhaps read already in the internet no, or in social media. How can we celebrate Lent? We fast from anger and hatred. So give your family an extra dose of love each day. Perhaps this is a better fast. Fast from judging others before making any judgments. Recall how Jesus overlooks our faults by his mercy. Fast from discouragement. Hold on to Jesus' promise that he has a perfect plan for your life. Fast from complaining when you find yourself about to complain. Close your eyes and recall some of the little moments of joy Jesus has given you. Fast from resentment or bitterness. Work on forgiving those who may have hurt you. The message of yesterday and today's gospel. Fast from spending too much money. Try to reduce your spending and give those savings to the poor. And then finally, after fasting here, Pope Francis says, no, let us not grow tired of doing good in active charity towards our neighbors. During this Lent, may we practice almsgiving by giving joyfully. God who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food enables, us, enables each of us not only to have food to eat, but also to be generous in doing good to others. While it is true that we have our entire life to sow goodness, let us take special advantage of this Lenten season to care for those close to us and to reach out to our brothers and sisters who lie wounded along the path of life. And the Holy Father was referring to almsgiving. Let us know, not grow tired of almsgiving. And again from Matthew, But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Saint Leo the Great no, once said the two wings on which our prayer mounts up to God are these. 
forgiveness of offenses, and alms to the needy. So, and I think this is where the challenge of doing good is. When we do good without expecting anything in return, that's really and should be our sacrifice. Doing good unconditionally. Uh, let's go to our inspiration, one of our contemporary saints, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. Uh, sabi niya, no? I see in every human being, when I see God in every human being, when I wash the leper's wounds, I feel I'm nursing the Lord himself. Is it not a beautiful experience? If you, you recall, one of the Gospels recently was Matthew 25. Uh, when the goats will be separated from the sheep, no, and the sheep will go to God's kingdom because they have given food and drink to the thirsty. They have visited those in prison and the sick and even welcomed strangers and given home to the shelter when they have seen Christ on others, in others. Mother Teresa no, uh, also once said, when I see waste here, I feel angry on, on the inside. I don't approve of myself getting angry, but it's something you can't help after seeing Ethiopia. And we know uh, what, what happened, what is happening in Ethiopia those who are malnourished and hungry. And then Pope Francis followed that up by saying, we are in a throwaway culture. Wouldn't our almsgiving become significant now? Seeing how many things we have wasted and had not benefited those who are in need. Mother Teresa also said the most terrible poverty is loneliness and feeling of being loved. Can we do almsgiving by giving attention and love to members of our family, those who have been set aside and neglected? That's why I said the biggest disease today is not leprosy or tuberculosis, but rather the feeling of being unwanted. And he says there's more hunger in the world for love and appreciation than for bread. Perhaps that could be our arms giving. That's why we think sometimes that poverty is only being hungry, naked, and homeless. The poverty of being unwanted, unloved, uncared for is the greatest poverty. And we must start in our homes to remedy this kind of poverty. Imagine Mother Teresa experiencing his ministry to the poor, was able to zero in on how we should do arms giving. It's even beyond the food. It is our love. That's why, as I end now, Pope Francis would say towards the end of his uh, letter, in the season of conversion sustained by God's grace and by the communion of the church, let us not grow tired of doing good. The soil is prepared by fasting, watered by prayer, and enriched by charity. Let us believe firmly that if we do not give up, we shall reap our harvest in due time and that with the gift of perseverance we shall obtain what was promised for our salvation and the salvation of others. So in capsule form, the Holy Father was able to conclude his letter pointing out you know, that we will reap the fruits of our sacrifice if we are serious and not grow tired of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Just these two questions for reflection no, as I end this uh, uh, meditation. Something that you can bring home, uh, perhaps no, you can also dwell in for the next days in, in, in your prayer. What areas in my life have I, I been weary and tired? In what concrete ways will I not grow tired of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving this Lenten season? What can I do to show 
the Lord that I am serious in becoming a renewed Catholic Christian, not just this Lent and Easter, but always. So you might want to take a snapshot of this slide. You know? uh, these are questions for uh, spiritual integration that can be food for thought not only for a day, but even for your 40-day retreat this, this land. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Bishop Milo. I, um, I think everybody is just uh, kind of speechless because we are really absorbing a lot of, uh, of what you shared with us. But I guess one of the things that we would, I would like to really ask is, you know, what really struck us is that um, you were talking about what people do an outward as opposed to an inward uh, conversion. And that sometimes we do we, we we perform for other people. So how do we how can we discern if what we are doing is truly good or if it is just a performance in service of our ego? Um, I think it's really honesty with self. Eh? You will know that. No? I'm here using common sense. I think even Saint Ignatius of Loyola and the other spiritual masters would um, tell us, it's actually common sense. No? Um, in philosophy, they say, even the, the Greek philosophers would talk about knowing thyself, mm -hmm. and that means being honest with yourself. Um, the Carmelite doctors of the church, like Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross, um, even St. Therese of Lisieux would, would teach us in their writings um, the foundation of a deepening spiritual life is to know yourself and be honest with yourself. So malalaman nyo naman ho talaga yun kung nagpe-perform kayo. Halimbawa, kung let's say nagsiserve kayo sa church o meron kayong ministry, no? may pagkawang gawa po kayo. Tanungin niyo yung sarili niyo, kaya ako ba ginagawa to para pogi points? Di ba? Uh, kailangan ba akong magpa-picture? Di ba? Kailangan ba palaging mag-picture sa social media? Alam na ginagawa ko to. Pwedeng wag na. Di ba? Yes. Magandang isipan yun eh. Kasi minsan kaya natin ginagawa ang nangyayari. Gusto natin makita ng tao. Ito, mabait, banal. Oh. Ito, um, Maganda yung ginagawa, o. Oh. Di lumalabas. It, it, it not only boosts, but bloats your ego. And you will know that. You will actually know that. If you're honest with yourself. And this is where you enter authenticity. That's, that's the greatest challenge for Bishop, right? And sometimes we need people to remind us. Yeah. To accompany us in that journey. Which is really uh, interesting because Matthew 6, 6 is the heart of it's really the core of our contemplative practice. When we enter our inner room, our heart, as you were saying, Bishop, and that is when we establish our relationship with God, that encounter, that personal encounter. Yeah, and if I may even add, it's good you pointed that out, no? because really that has boggled me many times. Why shut your door when you can really get out and pray in a chapel or your altar outside? And when I got that book no, that was actually shared with me by Cardinal Densi Rosales, no, and I, I even, it's a book I even uh, searched in Amazon and I was able to get a copy. I even uh, cloned it no, for my priest because the starting, the starting point was that, that Matthew 6 on praying. And he was able to qualify because in the inner room, what actually happens is that it is the voice of God. That's why it's, it's actually your conscience. That's where God speaks between you and God. And you will know. And, and they always say that silence is God's first language, even... In Psalm 46, they say, be still and know that I am God. That's really a very powerful popular, mm -hmm. powerful statement because we're so, sometimes for people who are introverts, it's very easy to entertain ourselves in our mind. 
and very difficult. If, if the challenge is to quiet down. Yeah, very true, Paul. Thank you so much, Bishop Milo. If there's any other questions, please let us know. But I just wanted to, to on behalf of Contemplative Outreach Philippines, to really thank you, Paul. We are so grateful for this profound reflection on, on Pope Francis' Lenten message because it's such a it's a practice that is so compatible with our own practice of centering prayer. Thank you so much for for this blessed time and for sharing what is sacred space with us. Marami pong salamat, Bishop. Salamat din po. Salamat din po. Uh, can we have a picture po? Just a, uh, what do you call this? Souvenir shop po. If that's okay. If everybody can just turn on their videos. We'll do that. Sam? Okay, I'll do this also. Just smile. Okay. Thank you, po Bishop. Very much appreciated. Salamat po. Marami pong salamat. Okay. Do I exit na po? I can exit now? Uh, yes, please. Uh, yes po. If you... Thank yeah. you very much. Salamat po, Bishop. Po, no? Thank you po. Please pray for me too. Salamat. Always, always. Thank you po. We accompany you po.